I've been talking to Board Beer, which is the Irish Food Board, about the future of the food industry, and this is a time of extraordinary change. Here we are in the, uh, May 2008 with wheat prices that have soared way above any uh, historic level, um, and uh, uh, this is set to continue. Now, why has this happened? Well, it's a whole combination of different things which appear at first sight to be very good for farmers. Uh, it includes the Australian drought, it includes uh, the fact that we have one billion people alive today who are children, they're growing up, their appetites are growing, but more important, the appetites of their parents are growing, their economic growth is growing. We're seeing an emergence of a middle class in places like India, which can now afford to eat meat. You need five kilograms of grain at least to produce a, a kilogram of flesh of an animal. So as people start to convert from, uh, from grain eating to meat eating, we're seeing pressures on the food system, and then there's biofuels, uh, which uh, we'll come back to in a moment. But one of the great problems is the, uh, the fact that emo emotions are so important in the food industry, and, and uh, they are right at the center of consumer thoughts about their food. And uh, it might be uh, whether food is for life or whether it's a poison. Uh, in other words, whether, you, whether the additives and things like that are things that you can trust are eatable or whether you should keep them away from your children. Um, food is something which causes obesity, which is now um, uh, 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 causing uh, $100 billion of extra expenditure for the U.S. government. We see an epidemic of obesity in America. One in three newborn babies will develop adult-style diabetes. That's because of obesity. Um, many of them uh, might have been expected to have got diabetes of that kind at the age of 65. Instead, they're developing this before their 7th, 8th, 9th or 10th birthdays. This is a national disaster. We're seeing uh, um, the issue of food for well-being, um, uh, food to, for life enhancement, food for, for additional memory, food to protect your heart. Uh, we've seen uh, controversies, as I've said, about the fusion of food and fuel markets in the biofuels debate. Um, we've seen controversies over the use of countryside, uh, even over whether uh, farmers are able to generate uh, revenues from wind, uh, farmland use, European Union subsidies, dumping, food dumping in, of, of westernized, subsidized foods into developing countries, issues of animal welfare, pollution, pesticides, fungicides, slurry, runoff, goodness knows where it really finishes. But the fact of the matter is that the whereas uh, leaders are interested in communicating uh, their values and their vision, the media is interested in revelation. And that means digging away for secrets which are inside the food industry that the food industry might not like to get out. And a media story can have catastrophic power. I will never forget when the, was the, there was the dioxin scare in Belgium. Uh, we saw uh, a certain amount of animal food, a relatively small amount, was contaminated by the use of uh, fuel from, uh, actually, actually it was old oil, industrial oil, uh, which was put into animal feed as a, re a replacement for rapeseed oil and other things. It just was a, a, an easy way to dump one lorry load. And that one lorry load was full of a contaminant within that old oil, uh, which is dioxin. Dioxin is produced in oil automatically by nature when you heat it to a very high temperature. And dioxin is highly poisonous. It remains in the food chain and uh, it got into uh, the, the feed, therefore it got into chickens, it got into all kinds of things. But that was in Belgium. A chicken farmer at that time, uh, one week after the scare broke, in Italy, told me with tears in his eyes how he had to slaughter three million small chickens because there was no market for them. Not a single chicken was being sold that weekend in Italy, and it was the same the following week. There was no evidence whatsoever that a single gram of contaminated feed had ever got into Italy, but the emotions within the consumer uh, across the whole of the European Union were so powerful that it killed the home market stone dead for a while. So, as I say, um, food is a very emotional business. And in this day and age of YouTube, Wikipedia and the rest, and TripAdvisor and so on, in the Web2 world, people believe what other consumers say online far more than they believe a national health advisor or an official spokesman from the food industry or indeed, with the greatest respect, the CEO or chairman of your own food company. So that's a big challenge for us in terms of winning trust of consumers because it takes 25 years to build the brand but only 25 hours to lose it. Now the food industry is being powered in part by the urbanization of, of uh, big uh, populations like China where 300 million people will move to cities by 2020 
at, at, by the same year we will see 748 million people in African cities against only 200 million today. So uh, as people urbanize they move away from the land. They stop growing their own food as subsistence farmers and they enter the food market, the global food market in the true sense. And the trouble is this, in those mega cities the majority of people are still living on less than two, three or four dollars a day and up to 80 percent of the poorest people in those mega cities are spending 80 percent of their food uh, sorry 80 percent of their daily budget on food and that is a big problem if food prices suddenly double or treble as they have done and the result is inevitable predictable and it's happening of course and it's food riots and you will continue to see those in groups of people who feel totally frustrated, who cannot feed their families, who just sold the very saucepans in which they used to cook their food in order to buy more flour, more mealy meal, or whatever it is, rice, that they use to feed their families. So this is a, a, a political nightmare. It's, uh, it's going to cause the uh, instability, political instability. It will cause changes in governments. It will cause uh, the fall of, of, uh, of entire institutions and it will cause uh, a, a new waves of, of political tension between nations and indeed between tribes inside nations and other tribes inside nations by that I mean any group of people not an ethnic tribe necessarily I mean an economic tribe I mean a social tribe I mean a political tribe um, a geographic tribe and, uh, and, uh, and we will see these kinds of things played out even more so long as politicians make the incredibly foolish error of combining food and fuel prices by linking them with biofuel. What a crazy thing to do. To make a mechanism by which farmers can sell their grain to put into the fuel tanks of private executive jets at the most extreme. Now, uh, the fact is that the European Union has said that by beyond 210, 5% of all uh, 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 the avi uh, or, or petrol has to be uh, from biofuel. The United States is using 20% of next year's fuel crop in 2009 for biofuel and the biofuel stampede has only just begun. And as it takes its force, you will continue to find speculation in just about every future foodstuff which can be converted in theory into fuel. So we're seeing stockpiling of sugar. Why? Because people think that sugar will be a great thing to sell to biofuel factories when there's suddenly a sugar famine. We're seeing stockpiles of just about every kind of food stuff. In retaliation, we're seeing nation after nation lock their doors and say that their food cannot be exported. And that means that countries which traditionally import food are in a further crisis. This chaos will continue for quite a while. In the meantime, as wheat prices have gone up, uh, so people have converted their fields from growing soybean to growing wheat, that in turn has produced a shortage of soybean oil, uh, which has produced a soybean uh, cooking oil shortage, um, and that in turn means more people want to sow uh, soybean fields, and they want to cut down trees to grow other things. So every food product in every acre of farmland, I don't care what it produces, is now in a very complex interwoven way uh, uh, meshed into the global energy market. And that is a big problem when energy suddenly jumps in the course of six years from $15 a barrel to over $135 a barrel with some people saying it could spike as high as 200 Now while it could drop to 70 or so it's still a major question because it also creates instability in the food market because the oil prices themselves are so uh, linked to all kinds of issues whether it's a terror attack on a Saudi, uh, perhaps a Saudi refinery that, that's thwarted or not. It could be um, a disruption in the Niger Delta uh, because of activist groups. It could be um, uh, political shenanigans between Russia and the European Union on gas. All kinds of things can happen uh, that can make uh, the world much more fragile in terms of oil supply at a time when, uh, when stocks are there but they're not sufficient to drive the world for very long. So biofuels will remain a very controversial area and in the middle of all of that you will see further tangles over the moral uh, or immoral um, justification for uh, further uh, CAP subsidies which in, in Ireland alone uh, come to some 12.2 billion dollars uh, between the years 2007 and 2013.